Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Seminar Sunday, District 21's weekly webinar series. This is a standing weekly webinar put on by District 21 Toastmasters for Toastmasters around the world, covering various leadership and Toastmasters topics. In this week, we are talking about the Pathways Educational Experience and how it changes the Toastmasters dynamic. It's great to have you on the line. Hopefully you're having a great Sunday or Monday, wherever you are in the world. And we get a, a great session into tonight with lots of questions and ideas. And when you leave today, hopefully you feel a lot more comfortable with Pathways. It's truly a great program once we get used to it. Just right now, of course, it's new, so lots to cover off with it. I'd like to start off by mentioning once again that this is a weekly seminar that we offer. In the next couple of weeks, we have the Speechcraft program coming up, as well as a session on mentoring, and then we'll have a couple more sessions on Pathways. The full schedule for this year has been sent out to members of District 21 and will also be available on the District 21 website right through to the end of June. And we will run these sessions as well each and every Sunday with the exception of two weeks at the end of December, which will take a two week hiatus. Other than that, you're welcome to join us every single week. The objectives of the session today is to find out what Pathways is, how we can find pathways and of course the important choice in paths. There's 10 different paths to choose from. How do you pick the one that's for you? We'll do a demonstration of the pathway system. We'll do a little bit of a, a surface dive of the 10 different paths that are available. And finally, we'll figure out how do you obtain the Distinguished Toastmaster Award in the Pathways Education Program? In between that, we'll have time for questions and polls and everything that will make it just a little bit more fun while we're on the line together here. Unfortunately, there is not a way to turn on audio for everyone, so all the questions will need to be written in. There is a chat area you can write questions, and there's also a button to submit questions if you're joining us by computer this today. So either way, anytime during this whole session, please feel free to submit those questions. Certainly be very happy to address them as they come up. Don't mind the interruption whatsoever. With that, let's, let's start a poll just to make it a little fun here right at the beginning. So for those of us that have been in Toastmasters for a little while, we of course have begun uh, become used to the traditional education program and with pathways we can we can double dip we can work the traditional program we can work pathways i'm curious to know have you registered for pathways so 20 people answered the poll 19 of you have registered and one of you have not so that's that's incredible that Almost everyone on the session here has has registered, but uh, only one of you have not actually had had the chance to uh, to complete that registration yet. Hopefully, after this session is over, you'll feel comfortable to go in there and make the selection in which path is for you. You don't have to race through it or anything. Of course, much like the traditional program, it is completely self paced, and you can work traditional program at the same time as the pathways program if you choose to do so. So that's that's a nice benefit that you have if you if you kind of are still trying to finish off some things in the traditional program, but just want to dip your toes into pathways. That's completely okay. With that, I do want to start. What is it? Well, pathways was something that was first talked about with the International Board of Directors in 2010, and essentially what it was is a response to the. The need, the, the need or perceived need, I should say, of change in the way that we learn. Of course, as time has went on, we've modernized, we've changed many ways of our, our lives. And to have something that was more digital focused was really the way of the future. So the, the 2010 board 
went ahead and started investigating what would be the approach. And it's taken until almost now to get that released. We've just recently been able to finally release the product because they were working on, of course, the development and implementation of this, this program, which started out as a revitalized education program and then became the Pathways Education Experience. It's designed with the member experience in mind that may not sound appropriate to you if, if you're not yet comfortable with it, because of course you think, well, what's wrong with my manuals? I, I totally agree. I mean, the manuals were great, but I think we, we all have to give that fair shot to Pathways and make sure that, you know what, let's, let's just give it 110% to start and see what happens. It's, it's a nice change for those of, uh, of you like myself who have completed the manuals, were able to go through and try something different now and learn some new skills along the way. There is the different competencies and, and pairings, which you'll notice as well. If, you, if you're on the computer, there's kind of a, a circle on the screen and it talks about the interpersonal communication and management and public speaking and those different aspects of the education program. And then it also has a, a like a fan out where it talks about the levels. That's important to know that each path has five levels. And that is no matter which path you pick, there's always five levels. And each of them, each level within that path is of more complexity. Every single level one starts out the, the same. Starts with your icebreaker, no matter which path you pick. But then starting in level two, it changes a bit based on what your goals are, whichever path you've selected. So that's where it gets into more your style and helping you build up from there, building your skills and knowledge. And finally, at level five, there's the area that you demonstrate your expertise, as they say it, in whatever the topic happens to be. Each path has approximately 14 different tasks in it, 14 different projects within the path. So they're not huge and robust necessarily. Uh, as an example, level one involves four speeches and a speech evaluation. So certainly not what we're used to in the traditional program, which was the competent, competent communicator program where you do 10 speeches before you get any type of recognition. Now you do four speeches and a speech evaluation and you've got that recognition with your level one, which is uh, which is quite a transition, of course. But that's that's one of the things we, we crave. I, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm speaking for myself here, but I'm I'm all in it for the for the widgets and uh, you know the the stickers. It was it was funny at, at work this past week. We had a we had a vote related to our union, and and when I voted, I was upset because they didn't give me a sticker. Like, come on, why wouldn't you give me a sticker? So this is what it's all about for uh, for people nowadays. I think everybody's looking for that that little recognition, which is uh, in the form of badges online now. So when you log into Pathways, you have badges. So there is five different competencies that they advertise with the Pathways program. And I'm curious to see which one excites you the most. There's public speaking, there's interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, management, and confidence. So I've got a poll on the screen now. I'm curious to see which one's the most exciting for our participants tonight. Okay, so interpersonal communication and strategic leadership were the most popular, followed equally as well by public speaking and confidence, and management wasn't feeling any love this evening. So that's, that's interesting to see the, uh, the different skill set that folks have come for. And thank you very much for the thumbs up. Where can I get on Pathways? All right, so this is an area that hopefully a lot of you are familiar with, but nevertheless, I'm happy to walk through it really quickly. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to share my, my computer screen. So we're going to leave the PowerPoint environment here and go to the computer screen. And you should see my computer screen now, if you're on the computer. 
So when you get to the Toastmasters.org homepage, the first task is to log in. And that's usually just here in the top corner. You'll see a login icon. It simply asks for your user ID and password. User ID is your email address. And if you don't know your password, it's relatively easy to reset it. One thing I do want to point out before we go straight into Pathways is this resources section. This is a section that I suspect uh, a lot of people don't know about. There's actually a resource library on the Toastmasters.org website. You do have to be logged in now to get to it. But once you're in it, there's all kinds of different categories that you can actually go through. And one of them is Pathways. So you notice here Pathways. And then you just simply hit the search icon. The resources that are here are quite robust. It's got everything from the icebreaker project completions right through to templates. If you're watching on the screen, you'll see that there's a guest email follow-up. So there's even a template that you can use for emails to your guests to let them know a little bit about Pathways, which is, which is kind of neat. I mean, you may or may not want to use that template. You may have your own format that you'd like to use, but the fact that it's available to you is, is extremely convenient. And then there's different posters. And this, uh, what is this here? This is a, a brochure of some sort. It's called Paths and Core Competencies. This particular document has been so helpful to me. So I, I really recommend if you've never seen it, do go in and have a look at it because it breaks down the paths. It breaks down a little bit about the competencies. And that's really helpful to have a good understanding of what the different paths offer you. So I don't want to go through it all here, but I just wanted to, to scroll through a little bit of it and just show that there is a, a lot of different things here. And they're available, of course, in the different languages that Toastmasters International operates. So they've got the, uh, the English, French, Chinese. Uh, there's also Japanese. And I know we've got a member from District 76 on the line with us today. So konnichiwa, or I guess it's morning there, Ohio. So I'll go over into pathways now here. And there's a, a number of different things that we can do from this screen. There's taking an assessment, base camp, choosing a path. And then of course, there's the areas where we can learn a little bit more about pathways. Taking the assessment and choosing a path. I've I went through all these links and I found that choosing a path and taking the assessment essentially take you to the same place in the end. It's where you need to take the assessment. That's the first step you, you take when you register for pathways is you take an assessment. It asks you less than 10 questions. And what it does from there is it actually recommends a path for you. It gives you a top choice and then another two as alternatives you still have the ability to pick from all 10 paths, but it recommends based on what you've come for. So for example, if you come to be the next world champion of public speaking, it's probably going to recommend a path that's about, you know, for example, the presentation mastery path, because it knows that your goal is to become a competent speaker. And therefore it's going to recommend that as top and then maybe your second and third choice will be something related to speaking as well. The leadership ones will be more hidden away. You can still choose them though if you really insist. So that's one of the great things about it. I'm not going to go through the full assessment or anything like that this evening, but once you click on take the assessment or choose your path, I believe it takes you, both takes you to this page here. And it offers you this area where you can take the the base camp method, it's $20, although your first path is free. And this is also important to note down. If you are in two clubs or more at the time pathways rolled out wherever you are based on your region, you get two paths for free. You do need to contact Toastmasters International in order to get that second path though. There's no automated way to do that online. 
you need to contact the supply orders team at Toastmasters International. So that's really important to note because you don't want to miss out on a deal like that to get the two paths for free. The one exception, of course, is if you want the printed version, which is $45, as you can, as you can see on the other side of the screen there, it's $45 to get the printed materials and you are limited to half the paths if you want English and just two paths if you choose to go with a language other than English. So it does restrict you a bit. It also means that you're not getting some of the rich content like videos and everything that are baked into the Pathways system. So I do think it's it's worthy of attempting the online if, that's a, if, if you think that's something you'd be comfortable with. If you've got members of your club that are completely don't own a computer, don't want to touch a computer, whatever the situation may be, at least there is an option for them in the printed materials. But just anybody that is just more or less not terribly confident in a computer, it may just be a matter of sitting down with them and, and providing them a little extra encouragement and support and make sure that they're aware that the pop-up blockers have to be turned off, which I can't unfortunately share here on this session because it's different based on everyone's browser. So if you're using Chrome or Firefox or Safari or Internet Explorer, they have slightly different methods of turning off the pop-up blocker. But that's the main, that's the biggest challenge to be quite honest. From there, once you know how to get in, it should be pretty straightforward. So we'll, we'll get to that next though. So I'm gonna go over here now to the base camp. And this is where we actually access the pathways area. One thing that's worthy of noting is you'll notice still here, you're on the toastmasters.org website. As soon as you click on this button here, log on as a member, it actually takes you to a second website. So it's, it's going to take you to a website called toastmasters.org csod.com it's important that you also remove that from if you list the sites that don't have block up uh, the um, pop-up blocker listed on that's got to be one of the sites so there's the toastmasters.org website but then there's the toastmasters.csod.com website and that just stands for cornerstone on demand which is the company that actually built pathways so even though toastmasters owns it and has developed it it's actually hosted by another company by the name of cornerstone on demand so it's not built internally by toastmasters which is some of the reason there's a few finicky things about the software just because it's a it's a purchased product not a developed product by toastmasters uh, toastmasters international uh, Sean Gold has pointed out an important thing about the printed materials as well. He's mentioned that the printed materials are $25 plus the 20 US dollars. So if this is your free path, it's only 25 US extra. That's correct, Sean. Yes, I don't think I explained that very well. So thank you for pointing that out. So I'm going to log on here as a member. And you'll notice at the top of the page, if you've joined us on the online version that it has now changed from toastmasters.org to the toastmasters.csod.com but now you'll notice here please disable your pop-up blocker so it recognizes right away that the pop-up blocker is still on and that means that nothing's going to work essentially once i'm in here because everything essentially pops up and for whatever reason the browser thinks that I'm, I guess, loading up spam or something. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate through this here. So here, here it is in Safari. This is an older version of Safari, and I'm using a, another computer than I usually use. So uh, you would just click on this if you want to just totally unblock all pop-ups. If you do that, though, just you may want to remember to put that back on. Or if a lot of times now sites don't use them because most people have pop-up pop blockers. 
Brian Dodds just mentioned, you can just add just the toastmasters.csod.com website. That's true. Uh, but of course, toastmasters.org is not likely to have any pop-ups that are going to hurt anybody either. So I, I like to add both, but of course, definitely this site is the one that's an absolute must remove the pop-up blocker. Toastmasters.com is, is more or less just a, or .org rather, is just a bonus. So from this screen, hopefully a lot of you have seen this screen in some way, shape or form. This has a lot of the features you're going to use. In fact, most things are here. You've got your educational transcript here, which is where you've selected your path and it's going to have the paths down at the bottom there for you to select, as well as the navigator. The navigator is essentially a manual that you can actually use to walk through how to do everything pathways. It's a very helpful manual. They do provide a copy to each club on rollout. So your club should have one of these kicking around somewhere. Possibly if you don't know where, most districts rolled out this past program year, which means that whoever was your vice president of education last year likely knows where the, this manual is. Once again, though, with this manual, you can order extra physical copies from the supply orders team at Toastmasters International. So you just need to give them a call. And I believe they're charging five US dollars for the manual. So it's not a it's not a terribly high cost or anything. If you did want to have a couple extras at your club for members to, to borrow and you utilize for getting familiar with pathways, it's a very small cost if you can offer a huge benefit to the members through it. So I'm just going to pull up one of these programs here. Let's let's say dynamic leadership. I'm going to open up the curriculum. And what happens there is it actually shows you, OK, I'm on level one for this particular path. It's going to give you a count right at the top, how many you've completed, how many tasks are required. And you can also see down the other side here your progress through the the different levels. So what's really neat about it is it really makes it more of a, a task focus. You're actually seeing, okay, after you complete your icebreaker, the box next to level one here is going to show that you're 25% through level one. So it's a little bit of a, a motivator for those that are like me, a little bit more widget based, want to see that. It really adds up very quickly. On the other side, the far side here, where it talks about the different levels, you see how you're working in the path. So after level one, of course, actually, I think it increases after you finish each project. It's going to show how, how much of a percentage you're moving along towards finishing that whole path. You can see the different projects that you have not started yet, but you're not able to launch them until you complete the prior project. So that is one thing that is a big difference for people that are working in pathways versus a manual. With a manual, you can read through a whole manual and know every speech, what, you're, what you've got coming up. With the pathways program, you don't necessarily have that insight. And why I say necessarily, is because there is some resources that do break down each and every project in Pathways. So I, I want to emphasize that, that there are resources available. I will be sending out a follow-up email after this with the link to the recording if you want to share with your club members, as well as some of the resources that are available because there are some really awesome things out there. So even though you can't see them, you can get a little bit of insight about what may be coming. I'm not, I'll actually load this up here. Uh, so activate, that starts you on your level and then launch. It's all you need to do. It's going to bring up the content. We're not gonna watch the whole thing or anything like that. But from there, you essentially just walk through the screens to begin the program. And w once again, with level one, everything is the same, no matter which of the 10 paths you pick. There's, there's nothing different about it. You always start with the icebreaker. 
You've always got the researching and presenting as your last speech in level one. The, the changes don't start until level two. Uh, Maureen said, once you complete the icebreaker, you'll be able to get into the other items in that level. Once you move into level two, all the levels in level two are open to you. I didn't have that experience. It, it's, uh, I'm not sure why, because when I went in and signed up in level one, I had to do each thing before moving on to the next, but uh, I don't know, maybe that was just some sort of glitch in, in mine then. So this is the icebreaker here. And as I mentioned, you just simply click on begin and then you follow through each screen one by one. There is an area here to jump as well around. If you, for example, get towards the end and you wanna go back and rewatch something at the start, then it allows that flexibility to go back to wherever you were before. And most of the projects are much like this as well. After you, after you complete your assignment, you reassess your skills. So I, I know there's some parts of the traditional program that did this as well. I believe when you were halfway through your competent communicator, you, you did an evaluation of how much you improved based on the start. And this is very much like that, except most projects have this attached where you go in and reevaluate how you feel afterwards. Each project is essentially the same. It's a matter of launching it and then clicking through the different screens to, uh, to go ahead and navigate through it. One thing to note about this as well is when you highlight over the, the task bar, for example, the home button, you have to actually wait for it to drop down and give you the option to go home. You can't just click on the home. But from there, it, it takes you back to your, your Pathways home screen. So once again, it's, it's not sending you home all the way to the Toastmasters.org website. That is actually down here. Return to the, sorry, this pop-up this pop is fading everything else. Return to the path, the Toastmasters Pathway start page. That is actually back to the Toastmasters.org website. So just take note of that. If you are looking to get back to the actual Toastmasters.org site for some reason, that button at the bottom will actually take you there. Home up here refers to within the Pathways portal, so to speak. There's some other things you can do as well. For example, you can go in and see feedback you've received. So this is uh, an area you can request feedback. One of the things I've been doing because my club is not terribly comfortable with pathways, much like a lot of clubs around the world. I'm actually just uploading my own evaluation so I don't leave uh, lose them. I haven't I haven't uploaded a few here yet, but when I did my icebreaker, I just went ahead and uploaded it. Did my second speech, I went ahead and uploaded it. It's just very easy to do if you want to save it for yourself. You can go ahead and put a comment in if you want to. And then there's the icon here to attach. So you can go ahead and attach your evaluation if you've got it scanned or if your evaluator completed it on their computer, which is another option. They could just go ahead and complete it on the computer for you and send it to you digitally. You can go completely paperless if you want to. Does Pathways give you a comparison between your beginning and ending assignment, Brian, Brian is asking. That's a, a feature that I'd love to see. It currently does not, which is unfortunate. It does actually require you to um, complete those assessments, but I don't think it gives you a comparison. I've done a number of them. I don't remember getting any type of comparison. I was a bit shocked but please let me know if anybody's been through and, and seen different because uh, I can't remember for sure, but I don't remember seeing that. Got a couple more questions here that I want to address. Where do you, where do you find the evaluation forms was just asked. Thanks for that question, Linda. 
I'm going to go into that in just a moment here because there's an area you can actually get the evaluation forms for all the projects, which is extremely convenient. Uh, you know, it's uh, that, that's one of the huge benefits here is, you know, before, of course, it was just in people's manuals, but now it's it's available to anybody. So if you know what you're evaluating somebody's project, you can actually go in ahead of time and get the evaluation form and, and start to get yourself prepared. So I'm going to go back home. I, I like to navigate from home because I think that's that's easy. Everybody then is on the same page. We're, we're starting from the same spot. There is a speech evaluations area here. And this actually is where you've got information about the different speech speeches. So this is an evaluation resource. It looks a little bit cumbersome, but if you know the name of the project, then you can find the evaluation for it here. So for example, persuasive speaking, going to go ahead and launch it and then you actually get the persuasive speaking evaluation form so every single evaluation form for pathways is located there which is which is great because of course you can just go in and as i mentioned grab any evaluation form that you want whatsoever so that's really the main areas that I personally have have used in the the pathways program uh, I've used the, the speech evaluation area I've used of course I've went through some of the projects in the leadership development path there is an area as well where you, you can set up a profile which is kind of fun you can search for club members here one thing I did want to make sure everybody was aware of here, though, is you can only search for club members. So even if there's a club next door to you, you happen to know somebody that's pathway, enrolled in Pathways and you type in their name, you won't be able to find them. It is restrictive just to your club. But if you do have club members that you can find, you can actually give them badges and everything as well, which is, which is quite neat. There was another question here. Okay, yes, Linda blinked. I will go back to, to the, uh, the speech evaluation area really quickly here. So from the, from the home screen, we just go to the speech evaluations, which is the final kind of blue box in, in the line of um, boxes on the screen there. And from there, we just scroll down and we find the title of the project, whatever it happened to be. So there's quite a long list of projects representing all 10 different paths, really. Let's say manage change this time is the one that you want to evaluate. You would just click on manage change and then launch. Can you post an evaluation of a club speaker online using your iPad during a meeting? That I don't know for sure. That's, that's a really good question. Don't know if you'd be able to do it via an iPad because that would be a bit different. I'd have to get back to you on that one, Virginia. I've just taken a note of it. So let's talk about the, the paths that are available. Because there's quite a number of paths that you can choose from. Uh, and as I mentioned before, the assessment is going to give you the, uh, the best result as far as it's concerned for you. But I'm just going to load up the uh, the presentation a bit here because I do have the the different paths that are available. So these are the the ten different paths that are currently available. One thing I'd love to 
to have everyone note down as well, just in case you're on the fence about them or you have thoughts about, hey, you know what, I'd be interested in doing something just a little bit different. Toastmasters International is working on developing different paths. They are currently developing a humor path, which is likely to be released by the end of this calendar year. The reason I say likely is they've had some challenges, of course, as a result of their, their move. They have, uh, they've moved from Los Angeles area to the Denver area, which has resulted in about 60% of their staff turnover. So of course that certainly has uh, left some challenges with World Headquarters to replace the staff that did not move with them and get them up to speed and in, in knowledge. But the humor path is, is definitely coming as well as an advanced leadership path, which is a little bit behind the humor path. So that's likely to come as well. And there'll be a mini path, much like the, there's a currently a mentoring path, which is a mini path. You learn a little bit about mentoring. So there'll be something on parliamentary procedure. So we've got the 10 different paths, and then there'll be two more full paths and a mini path that will be, that will be loaded up. So if none of these paths are of interest to you, perhaps the humor or advanced leadership are of interest. I know for the traditional program, the humorous was probably the most popular manual I noticed people using. So I think that will have a high uptake. So there is different paths on the, the leadership development, strategic thinking, public speaking, you name it, they've got it. I don't want to get into too much detail about each because I want to make sure we've got time for questions and perhaps this can be another pathway session where we actually do a deeper dive into each of the paths because there's certainly huge differences. And once again, I will send out a resource after this call that goes through a little bit more about the paths. So that may help answer some of your questions, but 110% I'm on board with supporting you. If you've got questions, anytime you want to contact me, I am available. Hiroko, how do I give a record for members online as VP education? So is that's a completion record? That's uh, that would that would be a separate session. But when you go into the base camp area, the vice president of education, the club president, and the club secretary, they have different access that allows you to see things like members requesting completion and pathways. Let's say, for example, I did the first four projects and you were VP education. You can go and confirm that I completed it in the pathways program. And what that does is that allows me to get in and start working on level two. Until you do that, I can't get in and start working on level two. What's important about this and the reason I'm, I'm emphasizing that, that the thing you allow me to do is move on to level two is that doesn't actually give me credit for completing level one. You still need to go back to the toastmasters.org website and submit the level one education award, just like you would a traditional award. You go into club central, submit education awards, and then you'd find my name, choose level one, and, and go through the process there in order to receive that credit for me as a member, as well as for the club in the Distinguished Club program. So that's something definitely noteworthy. If you are currently a club VP education or you are helping a VP education as president or secretary, you need to do two steps. Apply for the award in the pathway system and apply for it in the toastmasters.org system. Keeping in mind that those are two different systems. As much as they interact with each other, toastmasters.org is one, and then the toastmasters.csod.com is another site, so they're separated. There is no way for the base camp managers to determine if a member gave their speech or who evaluated them. 
This is this is true, Brian, and this is definitely uh, one of the challenges with the system is you can't necessarily prove that somebody gave a speech or who evaluated them. Uh, certainly, it's something that, uh, just like before, it, it, it's really an honor-based system, and hopefully a, a club VP education is on the ball enough to know what, what their members have been up to and is keeping some sort of rough record, or perhaps the club is using uh, really good software to monitor the scheduling of the meetings and who's completed what projects. Yeah, exactly, Maureen. So it's it's like a two-step system for verifying completion of levels is really what it is. Um, just because of the fact they're not all on the Toastmasters.org website. I think that's the limitation that restricts it from all being part of one. But it's easy to get tripped up by that and think that, oh, I've, I've signed off on your completion and pathways, therefore you've got the award. No, there's still that second step that's outstanding. But of course, somebody could get all the way up to level five, I suppose, and not get any awards if somebody just keeps signing them off only in pathways. So certainly uh, noteworthy. This is how you achieve a Distinguished Toastmaster designation in pathways. It is a little bit scary when you first look at it. I was comparing several different, there's, there's some great images that different members around the world have and this particular image is from District 73. It really, I just like the way it outlines that you go from being a new member right through to the DTM and here's the steps that you need to take. So for those of you that have become familiar with these images here, this is of course representing at the bottom there that you need to complete levels one through five for two paths. On top of that, you need to help with club extension is what one, one district referred to it as, and I like that. So you either help start a club as a sponsor or you offer a speech craft program, which helps either can be to bring more members into a club or it could be even to start a club in some extreme examples or a youth leadership program, which of course is a, a, a relatively short period of time program for youth that, uh, that of course helps promote Toastmasters to the youth and probably more importantly to the parents. So definitely uh, one of those things you need to complete. You, it doesn't matter which one, it's one of the electives, you get the choice. And then above that, it's got the club mentor or club coach. So it used to be that you could sponsor, mentor, or coach for credit. Now you need to either mentor or coach. So that means you need to support a club. And that's either as a, a mentor, which is for a brand new club, or as a coach, which is for a club that has been around for a little while, but now they've they found that their membership has dropped to 12 or fewer members, and you're in there to help them bring it up to distinguished. And then the final really requirement in that section is to be a club officer and a district officer. And you need to do each for one year. The club officer can be two stints of six months, six months each. District officer has to be a full 12 months. Finally, there's a DTM project that needs to be completed, which is si similar to uh, the high high performance leadership we needed to complete before. This is more reflective though of what you've learned going through the Pathways program, and that's how you achieve the Distinguished Toastmaster designation. So it I, I think it seems more complicated than it is. The, the main thing is that whole piece about two paths, helping a club, building a club, and then serving through club and district office. Uh, once you've completed those tasks, you're pretty much there. It's just a matter of doing that final project and you get the, de uh, the DTM designation. So we've got 10 minutes left and I certainly want to make sure we have a chance to answer a few more questions. Is there a marketing brochure that one can give to a visitor who has no formal exposure to Toastmaster International that makes them say, aha, 
This sounds like a great program. I'd like to give this a try. Thanks for the question, Karen. That is a, a really good question because of course, I think now when you've got a guest that walks into the member into your club and you want to convert them to a member, it's easy to say, oh, well, here are the manuals, have a look. This is this is what you're buying into. You can't do that now. Now you have to actually convince them to join and tell them, well, we're going to send you a login online, and that's where you're going to get all your content. Certainly a much different mentality when you when you log into the program like that. So I think that it, that's definitely a gap that we have. And one of the resources that we talked about a little bit earlier, that, that resource library, when you go to toastmasters.org, go into the resources. And from there, when, you, when that dropdown opens up, it shows resource library. Go to the pathways section there, because one of the things I did notice was some brochures. I didn't get a chance to load them up but it did look like they were tailor-made more for, for Pathways. And you could use that in conjunction with something else as well. One of the things that a really strong club I was involved with did is they actually had a handout for every guest that had essentially a letter from the president, first of all, explaining what Toastmasters was. On the back, it had the rates to join, so people knew right away, here's your membership fee if you want to sign up. And then attached to that was the membership application. So put, maybe having something like that paired up with the Pathways brochure that talks a little bit about the program and the excitement could help a lot with letting those guests know essentially what's up and, uh, and hopefully start the process of converting them to members. So I've got a request to go through the second phase of the education award bit again. So, that's uh, so I think what you you mean there Jim is the fact that you need to apply for an education award essentially twice uh, just to be clear it's it's not that you're applying for the award twice it's uh, the first step is essentially giving the go ahead to move on to the next level the second part is applying for the education award so the first part is actually in the toastmasters pathway site so that's the toastmasters.csod.com site the vp ed or president or secretary go in and confirm that whichever member it happens to be has completed that level that could be a level one that could be a level five any of the levels once that's completed the member is then able to go in and start on the next level in whatever path they happen to be working on. So in the most common example right now, somebody finishes level one, VP education confirms they've finished level one, they can start level two. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is the education award aspect. The education award is on the toastmasters.org website, same place as you've always submitted the education awards in Club Central. And you're conf and from there, you're actually applying for the education award. They do not go hand in hand. So essentially, you could give somebody the education award before they can move on to level two because the systems aren't speaking in that way. One is just dealing with the award part of it only, and the other is more or less just the permission to go ahead is the easiest way to look at it. You can go ahead with your next level once you get the sign off in the pathway system. It is a bit confusing, totally understand, and I think it throws a lot of people through a loop, but unfortunately that's the way it has to work with the kind of the two different websites we're really dealing with, even though they're integrated to some extent. The next question we have here is from Brian. If a member completes a level in one club and they are in more than one club, they can register the award to their other club. Yes, so I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, Brian, you're asking, so essentially they, they work through the, pro, the whole program in one club and then they happen to be a member of another club. Can they apply for the award in the second club? 
they can. They they do have to choose which which club they're they're working towards, of course, uh, in the sense of you can only get one education award every time you finish a level, but you could say, you know what, Club A, I did all my speeches in Club A, but Club B needs the credit more for the purpose of the Distinguished Club Program, for example. Club B, Club A could actually sign off with the go-ahead. Club B could submit the education award. So you'd get the award through Club B for sure. So I, I didn't really quickly want to cover resources. So there are some great resources out there. The toastmasters.org website is definitely the first one. As I mentioned before, it's got that huge, re huge resource area. It's also got a frequently asked questions on pathways. Going to the toastmasters.csod.com site, of course, gives you access to everything pathways. I also wanted to highlight District 4. District 4 is in San Francisco, California. They have great pathways resources, including a breakdown of every project. Hoping to add more content to the District 21 website, and there's some other districts around the world that have some great resources as well. Certainly uh, can be fun exploring different districts' websites, see what kind of things they're up to, learn a little bit about their clubs, and of course get the great pathways resources that comes with it. And of course, we'll also share some resources with you after the call to make sure you've got all the equipment you need to be successful in Pathways and supporting your fellow club members in being successful in Pathways. It's a, it's a little bit intimidating for all of us, no matter what our level is with a computer. So helping each other is certainly important in times like this. Marina asks, will you be doing a sem seminar for Basecamp managers that shows the TI and Pathway screens on what you've been talking about, resubmitting awards and levels. That's certainly the intention. Right now we're looking for a facilitator to run some sessions next month uh, while the, uh, the district leadership team is in Chicago at the International Convention. As, uh, of course, it will be a, uh, challenging to try to run the seminar those weeks. And I'm looking at some past pathways guides to perhaps lead that and they can help with the base camp manager piece for sure. Base Camp Manager, Jim, is the VP Education, President, and Secretary of a club. They are the three that have this access, which is called Base Camp Manager. Just allows them to do that sign off on, on people completing roles. All right, it is now eight o'clock here in District 21. I wanted to thank everybody so much for joining. It's so much fun to lead these sessions and uh, I, I learned just as you do as well. So thank you very much for joining. If you want to reach out to me, please feel free. My email address is mboundd21 at gmail.com. That's mbownd21 at gmail.com. I appreciate everybody that's joined us and the recording will be available to share with your club members. I hope you have a, a great day or evening, no matter where you are in the world. And thanks for joining us.